Um, why, do I, why did it do that? My camera zooms in when I hit record. Anyway, uh, so we are going to compare two Android front ends, one being Arc Browser and the other being Nostalgia. Nostalgia was made for the Ouya. Um, it is on its initial release in the Play Store. It's not brand new, but uh, it was made for a device that was um, not the best performer in the world, and so there's a little bit of uh, leeway I have to kind of give it, but it is still an awesome uh, Android front end. Arc Browser uh, was basically around when the Shield TV probably came out about a little after. And let me turn off my fan so that you don't hear it in the background because that's a lot of noise. I have two fans running. Hopefully the other one doesn't have a problem. Um, Arc Browser, you know, it's a newer one, but it has a lot of features. And it's very, it can be simplistic, but at the same time, you can get a little down and dirty with it and, uh, you know, actually do some, add your own systems and things like that, and add your own emulators. Whereas Nostalgia, you have to wait for the, uh, right now you have to wait for the app developer to update the application um, to support other systems and emulators. Um, one thing that Arc Browser does, that Nostalgia doesn't at least right now, up here in the Lean Back Launcher, I can actually pull up games right from the, the Lean Back Launcher here without actually having to launch uh, raise the volume <laughs> without having to launch the uh, the browser and go through all the games to find what game I want to play so if I want to play punch out just go up here it pulls up the uh, the information on it and then I can hit play and we can start where we left off I have it set with retro arc I have it uh, configured to uh, auto load and save so I just beat um, uh, what's his name piston Honda you pissed in my fucking Honda again. Okay, so let's quit out. Let's go to the menu, which you can do by default by hitting the NVIDIA shield button thingy. This uh, NVIDIA button that shines at. You hit that and you can get out of there. So. And you can do stuff like that, and that's really freaking cool. You can launch your game straight from the lean back launcher um, like that. Uh, let's open up, I'm going to open up our browser. Uh, there's a few different things you can do as far as the looks go of the application. The background normally changes, uh, it's wallpaper with gameplay shots and, um, you know, stuff like that, box art, whatever, whatever you got. Um, normally depending on the game, but if it doesn't have art for that game, it will just throw a random image, image up. Uh, you also have this the sidebar here where you can go down. You can also get rid of that if you want. If you don't want that sidebar, you can get rid of it. Uh, I find it to be a convenient thing, but I kind of don't like the way it looks. Um, kind of makes it look like a music app or something like that to me. Uh, but we have that. We have this thing here. I have this set to the classic uh, UI that they have here. It's a classic genre UI. Let me show you if I can the settings are need to be neatened up a little bit, I think. Uh, I get to, I have to have to scroll quite a bit through stuff. So I have it set to classic show genres on, on main screen. When I went to modern um, with this, it shows all the games. It shows all the box art, and that causes the, the uh, it bogs down the uh, front end and causes the front end to crash a lot. So I didn't like that, and I set it to this. Uh, the classic show genres on main screen. And now, since then, I haven't had to uh, send any crash reports uh, since I selected that. So, yeah, that kind of... That's that. There's a lot of settings down here. And, you, know, you got these things. You can you can add your own systems. You can... There's a lot of support for systems that aren't in um, nostalgia. So, yeah, I... 36, there's 3DO, uh, there's Arcade, there's all this stuff, there's some stuff that I've, I've kind of adjusted to work with other, like the 32X 
there was no template for 32x. I had to kind of adjust an existing template to get it to work with 32x properly. And so with the same with Sega CD. Um, and uh, what else? And Game Gear I did as well, and Master System. So, but then you can also add like a brand new from scratch system. I don't exactly know how to do it from scratch, but you can do that. And I think I can figure it out. It's not like something that's so hard I can't figure it out at all. Um, but you can add your own blank system. You hit blank. And uh, it says untitled new blank system. And then you can configure it and put the system you want it to play. ROM directory, the extensions for the uh, ROM files that you want to launch. Um, you can have it include subdirectories, like folders that are inside of folders. Yeah. Um, it's an emulator component, which I'm assuming is the uh, file that you need to launch. Uh, the emulator file, whatever you need to launch. To get the emulator to pop up or whatever. And then emulator action, all this other stuff. Um, but uh, you know, the platform. You have a bunch of platforms you can choose from the uh, the games database. Even GameCom. There's no GameCom emulator, but I guess they just threw everything in there. Um, so you'd have everything completely. Uh, so you'd be able to create your your system. You even have Wii U. <laughs> so this is basically oh look, ooh yeah, <laughs> ooh yeah, blah. The best commercial ever. Anyway, so yeah, we have all that stuff. We have, I think, two databases. Yeah, open, v, open video game database and the, the games database, which is what most people use. And stuff. So, there's a lot of stuff here. Yeah. So there's a lot of settings and things you can tweak. So it can be a very more uh, a complicated thing, but it can give you support for things. So you don't have to ask the developer to support specific systems. You can actually just add it yourself. But, of course, there are templates and you can just add that they're already added and you can just pull those up and do that. Um, now you can go in here. I have it set 32X. Um, this is one of the systems I think I had to adjust to get it to pull up the 32X box art and everything. Um, but it works fine. You get these little animations, like it zooms in like that and stuff. Um, you know, the box art and stuff, and gameplay shots in the back. Uh, some of the stuff I had to add, like uh, you see the 32X with the Sega Genesis uh, attachment, uh, or the Sega Genesis with the 32X attachment, that I had to download online and then add it to the individual uh, ROM folder so that that would show up. And some of them don't have it, but that's just one. But then there's also genre packs, so you can add these kind of images right here, like you see here. Some of them don't have it, and you can make them yourself, but I'm too lazy for that, so I'm just waiting for other people to make them. <laughs> so, this doesn't have it, and these just have these. Uh, yeah, I got cut off a bit. Uh, basically, these tiles do not look, they're kind of, the basic tiles aren't really nice looking. <laughs> Uh, until you add some kind of image files, and also loading those images can cause performance issues. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, um, you'll see the interface isn't the smoothest when scrolling. Uh, so, and like I said, the other the other UIs can cause crashing. Um, Another thing is with PlayStation, if you use FPSC, which I do, launching a PlayStation game from here. Where's my PlayStation section? Apparently it's missing. Anyways, if you launch a PlayStation game from here, the settings you'll have won't stick. They basically just don't work. <laughs> um, you can add the Android section, which I renamed Classics, you can add the P the place to FPSC as an emulator and then get your settings, which is that that's what I did. But unlike in Nostalgia, 
your settings won't be there. You'll, you're going to have the ugliest uh, pixelated uh, PlayStation games. So if you don't care about that, and you want it that way, in like the old school kind of way, you should be fine. But if you use a lot of like OpenGL and widescreen hacks and everything, um, it won't work. <laughs> your settings will never stick, and that's it. So, that's, that's that. Um, and both, both of these front ends also support Android games being added and all that crap. As well. <laughs> um, so, yeah, we have all the genres here. You can select them, blah, blah, blah. And, uh, yeah, like I said, that's, you can, you know, scrape for your, 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 uh, Let's say I have a Master System game and it's not showing up properly. I can go in here and go to the Tools menu here, and I can go like Fix Match or Fix Max Match using a different name or the database ID. I can add it to my favorites row, which is up top. Uh, make a collection, remove it from the collection, and I can remove the game from the database that I have and I can hide the game. Hide the game from from my uh, all my games whatever and you can also uh, change the emulator that this launches with each individual game so that's cool because if a game doesn't work right with with that emulator you can change the emulator that it's playing with and this way you don't have to go crazy s switching up emulators and doing all this other crap and you can also remove it from the last play timestamp which means that it won't show up in your last play games so, that's that. And I think that's really going to cover there for this. So, oh, you can also search for, for one of your games in your collection here. Can't do a voice search. I wish you could do a voice search for a game, but you can't. No voice searching. So, there's that. And, uh, yeah. So I get out of here, and I'm going to pull up Nostalgia. So this is the original. This is like the same one that was on the Ouya. Okay, so you're going to see a lot of things. Even when you pull it up, it tells you, it, it mentions the Ouya. So, um, so the UI navigation is a little rough for me. Uh, there's, it just seems like I would, I like in, in, um, in uh, Arc Browser, you know, you navigate, you, you pull up the side menu by hitting left, and uh, if you want to on the top menu or whatever the fuck, you just hit up, and it comes up. This, you have to hit L2, and then B to close, and the top part is Y, uh, and then B to close, and then there's ge game details is X, game options is R3, and to launch the game is A, but it doesn't say that. Um, so that's that's you know, that's one thing that's not so great. Also, you can, um, I think you could flip through the games. If you have a lot of games, you can use, like, uh, L1 and R1 to flip quickly through the games. Um, so, now, you see this? I like the way the box art looks. It looks really nice. Um, it all seems like it's unified. Um, it doesn't have any weird bars or like black bars or gray bars around it or anything. It looks nice. Um, there's not a lot of animations or anything. Uh, the Ouya wasn't the most uh, powerful thing, so I think if you tried to add animations, it would start lagging and being shit. But I like how he shows one system at a time, though. Whereas in Arc Browser, it shows everything. This, it goes, okay, you selected this system. And this is what I'm going to show, and that helps with performance. Uh, so it's not trying to show all the games and load all the images for every game or, you know, all this stuff. It keeps it simplistic and, and you know, it's loading uh, one system at a time. So I want to go to Super Nintendo. Uh, now I can load, I can have these Super Nintendo games. One thing I didn't, I think I had a problem with. Let me see if I can try to do it again. This, this gave me an issue. Uh, 
fetch games and interact about it. Okay. So. Back like that, like that, boom, boom, boom. Uh, okay, so we want to try to fetch this uh, the metadata. I said I found nothing. Uh, I'm just going to try Street Fighter. Okay, so we have Street Fighter 2, Street Fighter 2, I don't know what that is, okay. Is one of these your games? We hit that, alright, oh it worked, kind of, I guess. Yeah, so Street Fighter 2 showed up, uh, I did another game, it didn't work. Uh, they said, is this your game? And then I selected it and it didn't work. But that worked, so there you go. And these are all your systems, and it doesn't try to load the box art until you select the actual system that you're going to play, which really helps keep the performance uh, correct. <laughs> it doesn't lag and stutter when you're trying to load, go down this uh, list here. It just only loads that box art if you select it, which is actually a fairly nice thing. So, here you have 32X. Uh, like I said, the, one of the, the bad things about this is that it does not allow you to um, add your own systems and emulators. You have to use the pre-configured stuff. So if it doesn't show up, you can't have it. Like N64, I'm using the Moop N64 uh, alpha builds, and they're not here. I only have RetroArch as a system or a supported emulator, and I can't add a, um, the uh, alpha builds of Moopin64 if I wanted to, it just won't work. I'm assuming it only works with like the Play Store build or something like that, and I don't have that. So I can't play N64 games with this. Um, some other stuff, oh, there's no 3DO core or anything like that. Uh, oh, there's no Saturn core, or no Saturn, um, no Saturn supporter at all. Um, yeah, and there's no Saturn. The, the the emulator for Saturn is fairly new. It's not been added, um, so I can't use that. Um, one thing that's cool, you can change the the uh, wallpaper here. So if you want a different wallpaper, you can just hit change wallpaper. And I don't know if you can if there's like a special place to get wallpapers that are correctly formatted, or if you just use anything or what, but you can change the wallpaper. I actually like the default wallpaper. I think it looks awesome. Um, so yeah, there's not much to this. It's very simplistic. It looks nice. It performs very well. Um, and but it's just that you got to wait for support from the developer to add a system or to add an emulator. Uh, the navigation could be better. Um, it could be a little spiced up a little bit with some animations or something. It's even some little drop shadows or something. Not so much that it's going to make it crash or anything, but, you know, something. A little something. I know the Ouya was kind of limited and, you know, probably couldn't handle all that shit going on, but... Yeah. It's definitely a well-optimized uh, emulator. It really functioned well on the Ouya itself, which... You know, I was surprised when I when I opened it up and it worked great on the Ouya because <laughs> it's, it's like most of the stuff that I played on the Ouya was laggy and, and just did not work right. Not everything, just most stuff. Even the, uh, I got cut off again. Uh, so sorry about the Ouya, it didn't matter. Um, <clears throat> so now uh, there's another thing is if you use RetroArch, um, each individual system can be configured with this so even if it uses the same core you could have different configurations for the same exact core um, so I mean RetroArch has a per core configuration but it normally only works you know you can have one set of settings per core that means that every single system you launch with that core is going to have the same settings 
this is different. You can actually have multiple settings per core. Um, so, like, there's a Game Gear setting in uh, Genesis Plus GX that lets you uh, mimic that, that blur effect on the screen um, that you would get on the uh, Game Gear. And you can do that without affecting the uh, Sega Genesis settings and stuff. So that's that. I think it's mostly it. Uh, if I was going to pick between these two front ends on Android... Oh, by the way, also this is going to be updated with touch controls. Nothing mentioned about Arc Browser having that. So if you're using a phone or a tablet, this would be a very nice option. Um, so if I was going to pick between these two, at this moment in time, I would have to go with Arc Browser because of the ability to add um, custom emulators, uh, the ability to have these games launch straight from uh, the leanback launcher, um, and they are like those are the two main things. All the all the customization I can do and and uh, just like the ability, the fact that I can support it without the, the help of the developer, um, stuff like that. Uh, however, like I said, the performance could be a lot better, and it could look a lot better too. But yeah, I would pick Arc Browser at this moment in time. But uh, honestly, if if those features uh, were added to um, to uh, Nostalgia, then I would switch over because those are the two main features that I like from Park Browser that uh, Nostalgia doesn't really have. And I like to see a little polish, and you know, like, like I said, with animations that you have, they have uh, uh, hardware that's out more powerful to work with that can handle more. I mean, I see better optimizations for, or not optimizations, but better things like animations and all that crap. And also better navigation as far as like just being able to press up to access that menu instead of all this pressing Y and B uh, and pressing L2 and B and all that stuff. So, so basically, yeah, just open up the settings, allow us to uh, add some uh, of our own emulators. And um, the touch controls is a cool thing. Uh, you don't always have a controller with you when you have, may have your phone or something. It's cool. Um, but yeah, you know, and your own system. What else did I say? Uh, oh, and the ability to launch games from the lean back launcher. Is, is That's like two major things that would stop me from actually switching over back to nostalgia. Uh, like I used to use on the Ouya. Um, but it's a great addition and I'm glad they put it on the Play Store because I, I it really always bothered me that that they just left it on the Ouya and they wouldn't let they wouldn't put it on on the Play Store. I don't know if there was a deal or something with Ouya or something, but you know, like every a lot of people wanted that shit on uh, on the Play Store, and I was afraid it was just gonna be like fizzle all out like a fart. <laughs> it was gonna be like, okay, Ouya's done, done. <laughs> Although they did release a, a gay trailer on their channel, Ouya. Um, I was very surprised about that. They hadn't done anything in a year, in like, I don't know if it was a year, but quite some time. And then they released a trailer, and I was like, what the fuck is this? <laughs> but anyways, that's that. Those, those are the two, two uh, front ends that uh, I was comparing. And egg bowls. And right now I prefer our browser. So thank you for watching. Have a good day.